Chapter 4, A Pop Quiz. Nina's quiz was not going well. If only they had started with math, then she would have been right on top of it. Spelling was unfortunately not her strong suit. It wasn't fair. She was new, which meant she hadn't had a chance to study any of these words. Mr. Prendergast said just to do her best and the grade wouldn't count. But even so, Nina took an extra moment to curse being the new kid again. It was the absolute worst. How did anyone know how to spell wrinkle? Nina had an R down on her paper, but it already didn't look right. She spared a moment to glance down at her bag, which she'd left open at the side of her desk quite cleverly, she thought. She could check on the egg all through class. It was nestled snugly in its, snugly in its fleece blanket, heat radiating up from the hot water bottle, enough to turn Nina's forehead sweaty. Wait, did the egg have a crack in it? Eyes on your paper, Nina, Mr. Prendergast said. Sorry, Nina said, returning to wrinkle. Her face flushed even more. He thought she'd been cheating. This was not going to be a good first impression. The next word, Mr. Prendergast said, is content, as in satisfied, content. Nina spent a long time penciling a C, sneaking glances at her bag. The egg was definitely shaking and the crack was getting bigger. She could hear a tapping sound. She scratched her pencil harder along her paper, hoping that the sound would cover the ones coming from the egg. Oh my, there was a hole in the egg now. And from the other side of the hole emerged a little beak, hard and black with a hook on the end. Nina knew from her library research, that it was called an egg tooth. The chick was coming out. She wished Joel were here to see. Some situations just called for a big brother. She had only one letter down again when Mr. Pre Prendergast called out the next word, highway. This one Nina had a better chance on. She had just let her pencil make random movements on the paper though, while she stared down at the chick. It was fully out of its shell now, a real live baby penguin. Oh my gosh. Then it made its first noise, a very small fork. The student on Nina's right looked up and around confused. Uh-oh, this was going to get out of hand very quickly. Or, or. Before Nina could stop it, the chick picked its way out of the shell, then up and out of her backpack and onto the classroom floor. No, stop, she whispered as the bird started toddling under her desk, holding out its flippers. It was very cute, a dark gray ball of fuzz with a white belly and sleepy black eyes. But cuteness wouldn't be enough to keep the bird from getting both of them into trouble very quickly. Nectar, Mr. Prendergast called out as the chick gave the leg of Nina's desk an experimental peck. Nina slunk down in her desk, slipped onto the floor, and got up on her hands and knees. What are you doing? The girl next to her mouthed. Nina reached her hands around the chick. It was so fragile and light. Bits of egg still stuck to its feathers. The chick disappeared entirely in Nina's hands. It felt like holding a Christmas ornament. Nina eased back into her chair, hands cupping the baby penguin, it pecked at Nina's palms. It tickled. Is everything okay, Nina? Mr. Prendergast asked, looking over at her. Nina nodded empathetically. As Mr. Prendergast called out, adapt, Nina delicately lowered her hands back into her backpack and released the chick. But it could get out again. She zipped the bag shut. She could still hear the chick making its squeaky ork sounds inside. The girl next to her had given up on her quiz and was staring at Nina's shaking backpack with astonishment. This situation was soon going to, what was that word? Escalate, Mr. Prendergast called. Yep, that was it. Nina had just written an E down on her paper when Joel appeared at the classroom door. He looked sweaty and out of breath wearing his backpack on his front. 
If Nina wasn't mistaken, Joel's bag was shaking too. Can I help you, young man? asked Mr. Prendergast, clearly irritated at the interruption. I'm sorry, Joel said. My name is Joel Popper. Nina is my sister, and I have to go home sick. Our mother is on the way. The front office said I could come get Nina so we could go home together. Are you sure? That's most unusual, Mr. Prendergast said, folding his arms over his sweater vest. Nina looked from her brother to Mr. Prendergast, her mind racing. Then she coughed, her hand already reaching for her backpack. Yes, I'm feeling sick too.